Jazz, blues, snazzy poetry, arts, intellectualism, these things and many more form the backbone of the Harlem Renaissance, a movement birthed in New York that sought to empower and revitalize black culture in the U.S. Of course, that period is long gone, but in some ways I think certain aspects of that culture have lived on, especially in New York. In fact, that's what I initially thought after listening to Kay Sparks' Urban Couture album, with its jazzy sounds, messages of black empowerment, and speaking both truth and love into black culture. This guy is straight from Queens, so that's probably where I made the initial connection. But today, let's you and I have a good early look over this project right before it comes out this Sunday and see what it's really made of. For starters, I want to give a big thank you to Don Anderson, the PR for Kay Sparks, and Kay Sparks himself, as they sent me a free early copy of this album. Grateful though I am, the opinions expressed in this video are my own. As most of you haven't heard this project aside from what Kay Sparks has already released, I'll be giving you guys an idea of what to expect from the full version, so you can decide for yourselves whether or not you want to buy it. If you haven't heard anything from him and you'd like to get a feel for his style before watching this, I've included links to some of his videos in the description and also his SoundCloud, which has some songs available from this project. With all of that being said, let's dissect this project. As far as story goes, this album doesn't necessarily tell one. Rather, it prefers lyrical concepts, and they certainly abound on this project. A song called Flipside literally plays on the concept of a flipside, exploring the way in which humanity tends to see greener grass on the other side of things. In reality, if you see grass as being withered on one side, then it'll be withered wherever you go. Another song, Strip For Me, twists the concept of what would normally be innuendo, and instead spins the song stripping in the sense of exposing his inner self and the darkness in his heart. The title of the song is rather provocative, and I think he intended it that way, as it's normally quite a promiscuous term. Songs like The Homie E and Greatness is Complicated focus more on actual stories, but even these songs allude to bigger pictures and ideas than the stories presented within them. Meanwhile, songs such as Make America Fake Again and Sunken Place feel as though Kay Sparks is on a stage, doing slam poetry and tackling various black-related social issues in a free-flowing manner. K Sparks demonstrates a tendency to speak to black culture and encourage that we aim for bigger things than what is deemed desirable within the culture. He also has little to no reservations when it comes to speaking on the ugly side of society, so he can come across as blunt and hard-hitting. In my view, it's refreshing, as a lot of today's hip-hop is more concerned with vibes and having fun. It's not a bad thing, but it does mean that when an artist comes around and is intent on sober commentary, that artist can easily stand out. I think the interesting thing about K Sparks and his delivery is that despite his sobering method, he doesn't come across as a preacher. While he references God, it's usually in pretty artsy ways, and he doesn't address the ills of society and then offer Jesus as the immediate cure-all solution. He addresses the ills of society and laments them. He's sobered by them. They seem to break his heart, and he takes the time throughout this project to mourn right alongside the aching heart of this city. It reminds me of Jesus. Yes, he did go about and preach the truth, but he also met people where they were, and took the time to personally weep and rejoice with them. In that way, the album feels similar to the behavior of Jesus. It feels personal. You really get the feeling that he's only addressing these ugly truths because he wants to see society realize them as well and turn away. The title of the album itself plays on this in a sense. Urban couture is a bizarre clash of two very opposite things, that being urban street culture and couture, which has to do with high-end and high-class fashion culture. In that sense, urban couture examines urban culture with a strong sense of dignity and class, calling for higher standards and values. I think that's important, as he realizes the typical state of the urban mentality. It's often more concerned with what is deemed cool and relevant, rather than aspiring to be truly armed with knowledge. He doesn't speak down on that mentality, but urges his brothers and sisters to realize the cycle they're falling into. K Sparks is very good at coming into a song with a clear lyrical concept and goal, and this album makes that abundantly clear. Right off the bat, we've got an album that has live instrumentation. I'm no expert when it comes to instruments, but I can paint some broad images, and given that everyone's tastes vary, I'll highlight some good and potentially bad things about this live instrumentation. Let's start with the potentially bad side first. Live instruments, recording with bands, all of that has a very organic feel, but it can also feel outdated. This album doesn't sound at all like it came out in 2017, and when you combine it with neo-soul artists like Stephanie Higney that provide bluesy vocals, the album quickly distances itself from mainstream hip-hop. 
It's not an easy listen in that aspect, as in something you might play for a workout or a car ride. It requires a great deal of attention to really enjoy, so it probably wouldn't work well when played for casual party vibes. If you're anything like me and go through phases of having a short attention span, then this album might get skipped in favor of something more easily digestible. A lot of East Coast rap can be like this, so if you typically avoid that underground East Coast sound, this may not be your cup of tea. Let's flip all of those things now to see where this album shines. Live instrumentation means that this album feels and sounds organic. It's something like a heart, pulsing and beating, and with each pulse it makes the sound of a living and breathing city. It's the sort of music you'd share with close friends, the kind of music that can start deep conversations and strengthen existing bonds. As it requires a lot of attention, listening to the whole project gives a sense of completion that isn't quite there with a lot of current mainstream hip-hop. It can be listened to when you're alone and feeling pensive, or if you're just wanting some mellow hip-hop. It's not all jazzy though. The song Blue Nostalgia, for example, has an epic bass guitar throughout it that gives the song an undeniably fresh feel to it. In short, I think it's pretty clear cut with this album as far as sounds go. If you like jazz, you'll like this album's sound. If you like underground East Coast hip hop, you'll like this album's delivery. And if you like music that speaks to the conscious in a soulful way, you'll like this album's lyrical content. As I'm not familiar with K-Spark's work aside from this project, I don't know how it matches up with his older stuff. However, as far as being a cohesive project goes, it definitely works. Nothing off the album feels out of place. It's consistent with its lyrical content, and his style of delivery never suddenly switches up to something with more mainstream appeal. At every point during this album, it's the same feeling. Someone who sees a society, and more specifically, a culture that is missing Jesus. His heart is moved by this, and we see that throughout the project in that he addresses but never condemns as though he has all the answers. However, there is something I'd like to mention. As this album does have a sense of continuity, this means that the album has a classic hip-hop feel to it all throughout, so there may be a strong generation gap when it comes to younger listeners. Coming from artists like Jerry Mana and Aha Gazelle, I really wasn't expecting a sound like K-Sparks. Now that I've listened to the whole thing a few good times, I'll say this, it's not for everyone. You may find it boring and hard to listen to if you're not too big on the underground sound. On the other hand, if you've previously been enjoying this classic, east coast kind of sound, then there's a really good chance you'll enjoy this album. As for me and my channel, this project was a nice change of pace. Everything about it sounds clean and smooth. I'm going to highly recommend buying or streaming it to anyone who wants to try listening to some classic hip-hop that isn't from an older time, and also to anyone who already enjoys East Coast, Old School, and Underground music. For those of you who have heard some of the songs off this project, what do you guys think about this sound direction and style? Is this just not your cup of tea, or have you already pre-ordered the album? As the album comes out in two days, I hope this video will help some of you decide what you'll be going for. Thanks for watching everyone, and until next time, peace out. So in between, now then, back then, uh, you should be trying to make it. But it's harder to get up and take it when people constantly fake it. Black people in black churches with white pictures of a white Jesus on their fans. Or somebody grandmama talking about let them use your pastor. <laughs> Church usher like spit that candy out while your mammy shout. I mean, I've been conditioned so much that my conditioning's been conditioned.